Welcome back to episode 4 of my Bevy tutorial series. In the last video, we set up the basic infrastructure for our combat system. Now we are going to start implementing some of the actual combat for our game. In this tutorial, we're going to cover events in Bevy and roll our ASCII plugin into our own UI. Before I start, I'm going to give a quick disclaimer. I'm not going to use Bevy's UI in this video. There are a couple of reasons for this, but some of the big ones are the apparent lack of keyboard support and the lack of support for the kind of scaling I want for this game for text. I'm planning on a separate full video covering Bevy's UI, but as best I can tell, this is a very active area of development. I'll leave links to a couple of interesting RFCs and third-party plugins in the description if you want to look into Bevy's UI's current state. Alright, now on to the game. First, we need to create a system to handle the player input during combat. Here we need the keyboard input resource. Now as a placeholder, when we press enter, we want to attack the enemy. Attacking the enemy is going to involve many different unrelated things happening at the same time. Like we want a sound effect, the enemy will flash, and the enemy needs to be able to do its attack and so on. We could make this a giant function, but a cleaner way to do this is using Bevy events. In Bevy, events can be any Rust data structure just like components, and must be registered in the app builder. Let's create a fight event. We want the event to hold the target entity and the damage amount. This lets us reuse the event if there are multiple enemies or if an enemy is attacking the player. Now we add the event to the app and finally we can trigger it in our system using the event writer system parameter. Here we just need to call dot send on the event and construct one of our fight events with the enemy entity and the damage amount. Now we need a system to read when the event is fired. Let's create one called damage calculation. Here we use the event reader to give us all of the times the event was triggered in the frame. We loop over the events even though there should only be one at a time in our current game. It's important to be careful with events because they can introduce one frame delays and they are cleared automatically by the engine. If you are doing anything like using a fixed time step then I recommend double checking the cheat book for any quirks of missing events. Before we can actually damage the enemy we need to give it a health value. Let's keep this general and make a combat stats component. This will hold the health, attack, and defense of things in our game. This is a cool part of ECS where the player and enemy can both use the same components and be similar for most of the game logic. Let's add the stats to the player and the bat. Now in the damage calculation, we can get the stats of the target and use the difference of the defense and attack to subtract from the target's health. And for the sake of testing, if the health is zero, let's create a fade out to return to the overworld. We also need to change the fight event to use the player's damage. Now when we play the game and encounter a bat, if we match enter, the bat will eventually die and return to the overworld. Let's also make stats inspectable so we can use the eGUI debugger. Obviously there is still a lot to go here, but the first thing we need is some UI showing the bat's health and the fight run buttons for the player. We are going to convert our ASCII plugin to be a basic UI system for our game. The first thing we'll need is the ability to spawn text. All our spawn text function needs is commands to create an entity, the sprite sheet, the string to print, and the location of the text to print. Now we can loop over the characters we want to print and create a sprite for each character. Then we just need to create a parent and return the ID of the new entity. Let's also create a component marking this as text in case we want to query for it in the future. Now when we spawn the bat, we'll create a health text above the bat, and we'll add the text as a child of the bat entity. Notice that the position of the text ends up relative to the bat's position because of the entity hierarchy. Next in the combat damage calculation, we need to change the health text. We can query for all the text on the screen and get the children of the target. Then we loop over the target's children and see if any of them are the text, and if they are, then we'll despawn the text and create a new text field containing the updated health value, and add it as a child of the target. <music> now 
Next, we want some buttons for the player to be able to select during combat. I'm going to use a technique called 9 Slice, where you take a UI box graphic and stretch the sides while keeping the corners a consistent size to get a nice looking scalable box. Here it's easy enough to make my own, but there's a solid 9 Slice plugin for Bevy that is connected to Bevy's UI, and that's worth checking out. We need a new resource to tell our ASCII plugin which indices on the sheet we want to use for our box. Here these are magic numbers because the code page is a bit scrambled, but if your graphic was made to be used as a 9 slice, like a UI graphic from Kinney, then these indices would be much easier to figure out. Now for spawning a 9 slice, you just need commands, the sheet, the indices resource, and the target width and height. I'm going to do some quick math to calculate the x and y positions of the edge of our box and then spawn each of the 9 sections. I'm also going to finally add scaling as an option to our spawn ASCII function and go back and make all of the instances of this function spawn with a scale of 1.0. Next time when we're doing a bit of cleanup, we'll turn the tile size parameter from a global constant to part of the ASCII plugin or the sheet resource because it gets a little hard to ration about when doing work like this. If you want this code, the tutorial project is on a GitHub link in the description. Now we create one final entity to be the parent of the UI box and create a component to tag this as a 9 slice and return the entity. I plan on always having this be a child of another entity, so the transform is left as the default and will be positioned relative to the parent. Finally, we can create a combat menu using our 9 slice in our text. First, let's create a run button. We want the box to be 3 tiles high and we want it to be 2 tiles wider than the length of our text in the box. We want the center of the box to be in the bottom right side of the screen. Remember in episode 1, we set up the camera to have normalized coordinates. So the Y values range from negative 1 to 1, and the X values range from negative resolution to resolution. Let's create a helper function to actually spawn each button. Here we need commands, the sheet, the indices, the target translation, the text, and the size of the box. We also want to make a new component called combat menu option, which will be an enum specifying what this button does. Now we can spawn the 9 slice in the text while taking care to put the text offset into the box the correct amount. And then we'll create a new parent entity to hold both of these custom UI entities in the type of the box. Then back in menu spawning we just need to call our helper. Now you can see we have a nice flexible run button on screen. Let's also make one for the fight button and position it just to the left of the run button. Next we want the player to be able to select one of these options. I'm going to create a resource that will hold which menu option is currently selected and initialize it to fight. Now I want a system to highlight the selected option red. This is going to be some complex entity hierarchy climbing because the sprites I'm trying to color are the children of the 9 slice, which is the children of the button, but I think we can manage this. First, the system needs our new resource to see what is selected. Then we want to query for the children of all the buttons. Then we'll need the children of all the 9 slices in the game. And finally, we'll want to be able to mutate the texture atlas sprites of those 9 slices. So first we loop over the buttons and keep track of their ID. Then we loop over each button's children, and if that child is in the 9 slice query, then we want to loop over its children. And finally, if the child of the 9 slice is a texture atlas sprite, then we want to color it if the ID of its grandparent's button matches the selected ID. This is a bit much, but we are just climbing the hierarchy. I expect Bevy in the future will have many different better ways to climb hierarchies like this. Now the fight box is highlighted red because that's the selected option by default. Next, let's improve our combat input function to select between the two options. First, we need to mutate our selected menu option resource. Let's record what the current selection is in a mutable variable. Then, if A or D was pressed, then we can increment or decrement the selection. We need a global constant to track how many buttons there are, and then we want to wrap our selection value to be a valid menu box. Now we can match against the selection to update the selected menu item. Finally, let's create a match statement so that when we press space, we'll do the correct action for the button that is selected. If we're on the fight button, then we want to trigger the fight event, and if we're on the run button, then we want to trigger the fade out and leave. 
As a bit of cleanup, we need to remove our test exit function, and we need to despawn our menu after combat ends. As one last thing, let's make the enemy able to attack the player. Here we can use another state in Bevy because Bevy lets us have multiple states in our app. Let's create an enum called combat state which will hold whose turn it is. In the future this will be more complex because we'll want holding states where our animations and sound effects play, but that's for future videos. Now we add the state to the app builder and our fight event will hold the next state to change to. When the player attacks we want to set the state to the enemy's turn and we'll change the damage calculation to change this state if the target is still alive. Otherwise, we'll spawn a fade out and set the state to exiting. Now we want a system that only runs when it's the enemy's turn, that will handle the enemy's attack. This system needs to create a fight event, and it needs to get the enemy stats and the player entity to target. All we need to do is create and send a fight event here. Now when we play the game, we'll see it crashes. This is due to the one frame delay of events and state changes, because the enemy will create attack every frame that it is their turn. The quick and dirty fix to this is to make the enemy turn state have a bull tracking if the enemy has attacked. Now the enemy turn should only happen on the false variant of the state enum, and it should set the state to true. This shows one example of how sophisticated you can make your state machines in Bevy if you really need to. Finally, let's make the player not able to do inputs if the state is not their turn, and entering combat should set the state to the player's turn. In this video, we covered a lot of complex topics. We rolled our own basic UI, we discussed basic events in Bevy, and we used more state management to create a turn-based attacking system. Now we have something that's really starting to look a lot more like a game. The player can actually kill bats and take damage from bats. We still don't have any way for the player to see their own health or any experience or other basic RPG mechanics, but I hope the framework is starting to become visible. In the next video, we're going to add some juice to our combat and add audio to the game. We'll probably also add a way for the player to see their stats and to heal after battles. As always, thank you for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe if these tutorials are helpful. There's an invite link in the description to my Discord server if you have any questions or just want to chat about Bevy. Thank you for watching.